Welcome, I'm Catherine McFate, uh, President of the Center for Effective Government. This is our fourth Witness Wednesday. We're gathered here to hear the stories of the devastation caused by the failure to provide support to more than three million of our fellow Americans who have been searching for work for at least six months without any access to unemployment benefits. Last month, there was finally some good news. Almost 300,000 jobs were created and the overall unemployment rate declined to 6.1%. Most of these gains went to adult black women and long-term unemployed. This is good news. But the unemployment rates for adult men, whites, and Hispanics didn't budge. We still have an estimated 9.5 million unemployed Americans five years into this recovery. According to EPI, there are almost another 6 million missing workers who don't have jobs and aren't looking because they think their job prospects are so grim. If they were looking, the official unemployment rate would be over 9.6%. Despite the gains in black unemployment last month, it remains high at 10.7%, twice the rate of whites. June was the first time black unemployment had fallen below 11% since September 2008. Long-term unemployment among African Americans is almost three times the rate it was before the Great Recession, according to EPI. The Latino unemployment rate has been under just 8% uh, for the last four months. The last time it was below 8% was August 2008. Among Hispanics, the long-term unemployment rate is almost four times what it was before the Great Recession. Almost half of older Asian women have been unemployed for over six months. There are still about two job seekers for every job opening. In short, the long-term unemployment crisis is far from over. If we create jobs every month going forward that we created last month in June, it will take another two and a half years before we're back to 2007 unemployment levels. The long-term unemployed and unassisted can't wait that long. As you'll hear, they've been using up their savings, their retirement, drowning in credit card debt, giving up the homes that they worked for all their lives to keep body and soul together and keep searching for work over the last six months. The long-term unemployment crisis, while it's affecting every demographic, has been particularly devastating in minority communities because they've had higher un overall unemployment rates They've had longer spells of long-term unemployment over the past five years, and they're more likely to live in cities and regions that have smaller, uh, slower job growth, and they have less wealth and assets to fall back on. Imagine how difficult it is to get up in the morning, week after week, to keep applying for jobs as your bills pile up, you fear an eviction, you don't know if you can keep your phone on to get that call back from an employer. This is why the Emergency Unemployment Compensation Program is there, to give hardworking Americans a life raft to carry them over to the next job. We need to reinstate emergency unemployment assistance now. We have another really impressive list of representatives and other committed leaders who want to stand with the unemployed today and stand up for their fellow Americans. We start now with Congresswoman Barbara Lee from California. Thank you very much. And I want to thank all of you for being here. I want to thank the Center for uh, Effective Government for coordinating this and for your leadership on this issue. Also to my colleagues, I just want to thank you all for being here and for your consistent work and your consistent voice on behalf of those living on the edge and those living on the brink. Uh, this is truly uh, a it's a sad day, really, that we have to come together once again to talk about the importance of extending unemployment compensation. Let me just start by uh, reading Diana's story. Diana lives in Alameda County. She says, do people not understand the cost to maintain just an apartment in the Bay Area of California? My husband searches for work each and every day. I think it's really hard on the unemployed between ages 55 and 60. Not old enough to retire, but also can't get hired. I think we need to look at all aspects of this economy. Companies cutting full-time work to part-time. Companies not giving raises. Not even cost of living raises. 
in the last eight years or so. We are just regular citizens who obey the law, hold down jobs, and try to take our responsibility seriously. However, we are starting to feel very beaten down by our system. Past unemployment compensation, there are still many of us searching for work. Let me uh, thank Diana for having the strength to share her story. Uh, it takes a lot of courage. She's one of those who uh, are living once again on the edge, on the brink. Sadly, over 3.3 million people have their own stories of struggling to make ends meet and just to get by, again, living on the edge. Because for the last six months, and it's really a shame and disgrace, the Republicans in Congress have simply and utterly refused to extend vital unemployment insurance. Now, this crisis is hurting all of our communities in every congressional district across this land. It's having an especially devastating impact on communities of color. Five years after the end of the Great Recession, the unemployment rate, for example, for African Americans is still more than twice the unemployment rate of whites, and Latino unemployment rate is still one and a half times the rate for white Americans. We're here to demand that Republicans take action now to renew unemployment insurance, to create jobs, and to make sure our economic recovery is effectively reaching all Americans. It's past time the Republicans stop blocking this vital lifeline, and that's what it really is. It's a lifeline to so many families. It's downright cruel, and it makes zero economic sense. Every dollar we spend on unemployment insurance not only helps struggling families, but adds, mind you, a dollar and 50 cents to our recovering economy. So we know it's not only the right thing to do, which all of us truly believe it is, but it's also good for our economy. So we need to end this Republican assault on the unemployed that's hurting more and more people every single day, and it's harming more and more children every single day. We have a message for the millions out there who, str who are struggling. We are not going to stop fighting. We will not stop fighting for the renewal of this vital lifeline. Our message is very clear, and it's yes, it's the Republicans in this body. It's time to renew unemployment insurance. It's time to do it now. Thank you again so much. Really appreciate all of you once again being here. Now let me bring forward uh, Congressman um, Reverend Emanuel Cleaver, who's been such a great leader on behalf of the poor and the working poor and those who have been marginalized in our society. Thank you again. Let me uh, first associate myself with the comments of um, Barbara Lee, uh, who's been out, on, out front on this issue, as, as you know, uh, more so than perhaps uh, uh, anyone else in, in Congress. Uh, I want to read Kathy's story from Blue Springs, Missouri, which is a suburb of Kansas City, uh, which I represent. Kansas City, Missouri, because uh, we get irritated when people <laughs> say, uh, you know, how, how are things in Kansas, or do you know Dorothy? Uh, so I'm from Kansas City, Missouri, Blue, of which Blue Springs is a suburb and a part of my congressional district. Kathy has worked since she was 14 years old and has been a single parent for the last 18 years. She is a single parent of a college student who's never had a job, but who's been looking hard for one to be able to help her out. In the past, uh, Kathy has worked two jobs, working extra jobs to make ends meet. In August of 2012, uh, after two promotions within the previous six months, Kathy was injured on her job and therefore was no longer able uh, to use her right foot which meant that she had permanent damage, nerve damage, to her ankle. And so in February of 2013, her employer terminated her, du uh, her duty uh, as an employee because of her injury. She's been looking for work, but has to have an office job where she can sit, and for some reason, no one is giving her a chance. The need to extend this law that we passed previously uh, is clear. Uh, there are a lot of people who are suffering and in the case of Kathy she's on the verge of becoming homeless not because as some would suggest she doesn't want to work or she's not energetic but because of an injury and she's still trying to get a job. Now there are people who are saying uh, that this is never going to happen and you uh, uh, wild-eyed liberals ought to just leave it alone. My, uh, my mother 
required that I wash dishes uh, like she did of our of my three sisters, except uh, when we had a company over for dinner or on Sundays when she brought out her good dishes. And then she figured out that I was enjoying it uh, because she she figured, you know, I'm not going to uh, get him to do it because he'll end up breaking the dishes. Uh, you know, he's not going to be careful. And then my mother came up with what I consider the death penalty, which was I had to wash dishes particularly uh, when she brought out her good dishes. But she added to that that there is no forgiveness of dropping the dishes because I have a heavy load. What I would do is get all the dishes and, and try to take them over together and, and with in my mind. I'll drop something and then she'll say, no, your sisters will finish. She said, there's no forgiveness because you dropped the dishes and claimed it to be a heavy load. There is no question that getting uh, this uh, these unemployment benefits uh, restored is heavy, but there is no reason for us to drop it simply because it's heavy. And our next speaker will be Reverend Riley Sadler. Is, is he here? All right, we'll go to Congresswoman um, Judy Chu. Thank you. Well, thank you. Uh, it is great to join with my colleagues, Congress members Barbara Lee and Emmanuel Cleaver, in speaking out against the uh, expiration of our unemployment benefits. And as chair of the Congressional Asian Pacific American Caucus, I rise today to call attention to the plight of millions of American families. Across the country, men, women, and children are caught in the crosshairs of our do-nothing Republican Congress. And this includes Maya from California, whose story I would like to read. She says, I am a single mother of three. I've been working since I was 16. I was laid off work due to a massive layoff 10 months ago, and I've been looking for work every single day since the day that they gave us our first notice. Everywhere I apply, I'm either overqualified or underqualified. The city I live in is not too big, and there are not many good paying jobs out here. I've, I've applied for places that are two hours away because I need to work. People think we are lazy and don't want to work. Trust me, I'd rather work than sit at home collecting half of what I used to make. I received one week of extension funds and was then cut off. And since then, I've been selling things, going through savings, turning off things such as cable, and I'm almost at the point where I have to sell my wedding ring that my late husband gave me 10 years ago. There's not a day that goes by where I do not look for work, apply for work, follow up on applications that I've submitted. I'm losing everything that I've worked so hard and it really hurts. Please help your fellow Americans by restoring UI benefits. There are those of us who really need this. They, there are three young kids of mine who have nothing to do with any of this and yet they are suffering. While Maya is not alone, 3.3 million Americans have lost their emergency benefits and struggle every day to make ends meet. It does not have to be this way. It should not have to be this way. And if Republicans join Democrats to solve this issue, it would not be this way. It's time to come together to build an economy that leaves no person behind, ensures that all Americans have the opportunity to succeed. Thank you. Um, next we have uh, Gregory Sandana from the um, Executive Director of the Asian Pacific American Labor Alliance at the AFL-CIO. Uh, thank you. Again, uh, my name is Gregory Sandana. Um, in addition to serving as the Executive Director of the Asian Pacific American Labor Alliance, I also serve as the Chair of the National Council of Asian Pacific Americans. I'm here today to raise the voices of the many Asian Americans and Pacific Islanders um, who are impacted by unemployment and whose stories are not told in the mainstream media. An alarming 50.1% of unemployed APIs were jobless for over 27 weeks, and Asian Americans and Pacific Islanders have the highest rates of long-term unemployment of any racial or ethnic group. Unemployment insurance benefits, um, as um, Congresswoman Barbara Lee said, remain a lifeline for many in the AAPI community and all underserved communities across the country who are heavily um, impacted by the recession um, and are still struggling to survive despite the current economic recovery. 
compared to whites, Asian Americans have lower per capita incomes, a higher poverty rate, and a greater proportion who are low income. Um, unemployment has risen, and the number of unemployed Asian Americans grew 300% in Pennsylvania, almost 200% in California, and 80% in New Jersey. Um, and I'm now going to read a story of Walter, who, is, who lives in New Jersey. He, he says, I am a person that has held a full-time job since I was 18 years old. Unfortunately, I was laid off from my construction job in June of 2013 because we completed the project. Normally, I get calls to hop on a, a new job within weeks of a layoff. Um, well, I made many calls to my union and union brothers to no avail. I still haven't found a job. I was collecting unemployment, but when it ran out, I applied for, uh, applied for the extension. When the extension stopped in December, my wife had to become the provider. Living on one income with two children, two children is extremely difficult. On a daily basis, we barely have enough money for food. My son plays sports and taking him to practice and games four or five days a week can be very costly. I'm not out of a job because I'm lazy. I'm a very hard worker. The New Jersey Carpenters Union isn't getting the jobs the way it used to. My family needs the extension in order to keep food on the table. And so for Walter and for the millions of Americans who rely on unemployment insurance as a lifeline, we encourage um, uh, the extension um, and renewal immediately. We hear you, Walter, and we stand with you. Thank you. Congresswoman Jen Schakowsky. Oh, thank you. Every eight seconds, another American loses benefits and be, is added to the 3.3 million Americans who have lost their emergency unemployment benefits. This disproportionately impacts communities of color, which experience higher unemployment rates. We have to act now to renew UI for these families. July should not come and go without us voting to renew unemployment insurance for our fellow Americans. We're scheduled, the Congress is, to leave for the month of August. All John Boehner needs to do is give us a vote and it will pass. Here's Stella's story. She's from my district in Chicago. I came to the United States 28 years ago, and even though I had a teaching degree from my country, Nigeria, my husband encouraged me to go back to school, so I got my bachelor's degree. I started work three months after arriving in the United States. A few years ago, I lost my husband. I was a director of a daycare center at the time. Now I am unemployed and without him. I have exhausted all of my savings. My children still live at home. My family members have been sending me money from Nigeria. I have applied to at least 200 jobs, but I've only gotten three interviews. I'm not asking for indefinite unemployment benefits. In fact, I used to be one of those who judged people that stay on unemployment benefits for more than six months. But I cannot continue to beg my family in Nigeria for help. So for Stella's sake and for all the millions of others, let's have a vote to renew unemployment insurance um, without any further delay. Thank you. Thank you. Reverend Phil Hirsch, who's a Lutheran pastor. Thank you. I'm Phil Hirsch, and I'm assistant to the bishop for the Lutheran churches here in Washington. I'm here because our churches across the country and in this area represent a variety of ethnicities, and people who are employed, and people who are unemployed, and people who are chronically unemployed. And we believe that our God cares especially for people who suffer. And I'm here to read a story of a man named Wayne who lives in East Orange, New Jersey. I never in a million years thought I would find myself in this situation, he says. I'm 56 years old and have been unemployed since September 2013. After going on countless interviews and sending my resumes with little response, it has become a part of my daily ritual. I lost my job through no fault of my own after collecting unemployment for only 26 weeks. I was informed that Congress has eliminated extended emergency benefits. While Congress and the Senate have been going back and forth with this issue for the last five months, over three million people like myself have been horribly affected. Looking for work and being told I am overqualified or underqualified or the not hiring is hard. I'm really trying to keep myself together and to make ends meet, but with no income, I can't go on like this, and my family can't keep helping me either. I am by no means a lazy person, having been gatefully employed for the last 35 years, now finding myself in this situation, 
is taking its toll both mentally, physically, and surely financially. I'm the proud father of three who have, has no clue of the struggle that dad is going through to try and keep a roof over their heads, lights on, and food to eat. We hear you, Wayne. We stand with you. Thank you. Congressman um, and House Democratic Caucus Chair Xavier Becerra. Thank you. Thank you. I want to thank all those who have continued the fight to make sure that Americans who wish to work but have no job through no fault of their own do get that opportunity. We know that every day that an American who wants to work doesn't get out there and help build America is a wasted day. And we don't have time or money to waste. And so the politics of this House of Representatives, the shut down, do nothing mentality that has kept us from helping those Americans get back to work and building America is keeping us from being as productive as we should be. 3.3 million Americans and counting. Wasting a day, wasting money, when we could be voting to put those people to work. It's time to put them to work. As Tammy in Los Angeles said, I am 49 years old and have been working since I was 16. I want to work and I am far from lazy. I love my country and served in the United States Navy. I lost my job as a technician after being with the same company for over 23 years. I received unemployment benefits for about four months and I was able to pay my mortgage and car note. Since the extensions were stopped, I lost my car and have moved several family members in to help with the mortgage. I have diligently searched for work and continue to search for work of any kind. Please reinstate the extension program and give us working Americans the help we need so that we can continue to return to the American workforce and regain our dignity. I would proudly lay down my life for America. America, please help me. Thank you. And now we have Congress, Congressional Hispanic Caucus Chair Ruben Hinojosa. I apologize for being a few minutes late. I was in the uh, Capitol in a debate on a very important bill, H.R. 803, which is the reauthorization of Workforce Investment Act. And just like we are doing there, working in a bipartisan and bicameral manner, I believe that the message that our Democratic Chair Javier Becerra has given you and is, is making a very strong point is that we should be doing the same thing with this issue that is so important. I'm, I am glad to join Congressman Cleaver, House Democratic Chair Javier Becerra, who just spoke, Congressional Asian Pacific American Caucus Chairwoman Judy Hsu, Congressional Woman Barbara Lee, as well as our own community leaders in calling for action on unemployment insurance. Almost 3.3 million people are now without unemployment insurance and that number only keeps growing each and every day. Millions of families across America have been struggling to make ends meet since those benefits ended on December the 28th, 2013. Communities of color particularly are severely affected the unemployment rate for Latinos is 7.8% as compared to the national average of 6.1%. I want to share with you Linda's story. Linda is from my congressional district in McAllen, Texas. And this is what she said. I am in my 60s and I was laid off in May of 2013. I've had to take out what little I had in retirement. In saving, in addition, I am putting my house of 26 years up for sale because I have not found a job. My situation is getting beyond critical. Please help with unemployment benefits. Instead of helping the Lindas across our country, House Republicans are choosing to sue President Obama. We must renew unemployment insurance benefits and we must do so immediately. Thank you. Thank you, Congressman. And now we have two guests from out of town. So I'd like to introduce to you, we're very pleased. 
uh, we're very pleased to introduce Reverend Rodney Sadler. Um, he's been working on Moral Mondays in North Carolina, and we took our Witness Wednesdays from your queue. So please join us. Good morning. Good morning. It's good to be with you all. My name is uh, Rodney Sadler. I work with Moral Mondays in the NAACP in North Carolina. In North Carolina, we're the only state in the nation where unemployment benefits have been denied for people past eight weeks. 170,000 people last year in a single day were cut from the rolls of our unemployment. Uh, we are the first state to deny what comes from the federal government to our people for our own political purposes. I stand here today to say that we all need jobs. We need to find ways to employ all of our people. Uh, all people are human beings created in God's image and they therefore deserve the respect and dignity of work. I want to talk about the story today of a young woman named Jenny from Climax, Georgia. She says, I lost my job in June of 2013. I had worked at a pharmacy for eight years that was closed due to the owner's unlawful actions. There was nothing, not a single thing I could have done to save my job. I was granted unemployment. The county in which I live has an unemployment rate of nearly 12%. With my qualifications, I am overqualified to even work at a dollar store. And despite applying for numerous times uh, for professional help with my resume, I have applied and continue to apply to every possible job that comes my way for which I am qualified. I have a Bachelor of Science degree, 11 years of work experience, and I am working on my master's, yet it has not been enough. I am so frustrated with being told that I simply need to look harder or do more. What else can I do? Without this money, I have nothing to help me take care of my son. I live in a double wide trailer that has plumbing problems, and yet I will still probably lose that because no one cares about people like me. Let's remind Jenny that people really do care for people like her. Amen. Thank you. We have another guest from out of town, Kevin Bradshaw, the president of uh, the Bakery, Confectioner, Tobacco Workers, and Grain Millers Union, Local 252 in Memphis, Tennessee, from Memphis, Tennessee. How you doing? My name is Kevin Bradshaw. I'm from Memphis, Tennessee. I've been unemployed for nine months, me and along with other 225 workers. Um, since then, our unemployment benefits have ran out in the state of Tennessee. Um, since then, we've been seeking assistance from our different union brothers and sisters through a hardship fund. We've had members um, who have lost their homes, they've lost their cars, even have um, filed bankruptcy and some spouses have left them because of unemployment issues. We, we haven't been able to gain any type of gainful employment in the city of Memphis because of conspired efforts of the company to put us on a blacklist, not to hire us, to force us into retirement, to force people who have worked there for 40 years, 54 years, into retirement so they could bring in new workers who make way less money with no insurance and no benefits at all. So since then, we've been standing strong on our picket line since October 2013 last year. Unemployment is very essential because without that, it's put us over, it put us over the hump for the first six, seven months, but now we have no, one, no income coming in whatsoever. So it's been very, very hard for the last eight months or nine months going into right now. And we need to understand that we need to come together all over the, the, the nation, all over the country. In America, labor needs to unite with everyone. We need to build coalitions like we have built called COPPER. That stands for the Coalition for the Organization of Protection of People Equal Rights. And get everyone on board in your local government, in your city, every labor union, everyone who's working in an organized and unorganized um, um, shop to realize that the importance of labor and, and without labor, you can't have a strong community. Without a strong community, you, you have um, lack of education and everything else. So we have to we have to go out into the fields and, and not keep having discussions, and which are good and, and by all means are good, but we just keep on having discussions and we just keep on talking about what we, we could be doing. So the time out for talking and, and the harvest is ripe and the labors are few. So we just need to come together and work together and build this country back and take back what is, what is ours. We are labor, we are united, we are America. Thank you, President Bradshaw. And now we have Gerald Kakwitosh, who's the national, from the National Congress of American Indians. Gerald. Thank you. Good afternoon, everyone. My name is Gerald Kakwitosh, and I'm with the National Congress of American Indians. 
I'm here today because the extension of unemployment insurance is an important issue, especially for Indian country, where the average unemployment rate hovers around 17 percent, significantly higher than the national average, uh, with some areas in Indian country exceeding 50 percent unemployment. So we must work together to ensure Native communities uh, have the help and necessary resources to, to develop a strong and sustainable workforce and help those working hard trying to provide for their families who find themselves unemployed through no fault of their own. And I'm here today to share a story from Patricia, who is in Crystal, New Mexico, on the Navajo Indian Reservation. Since the end of the extended unemployment insurance, I have lived only on food stamps for son and I, for which I had to apply because I didn't have a job to feed ourselves. I also took full-time classes to obtain more skills, which I thought would help me to get employment again. I have my bachelor's, de bachelor's degree, but it's like having a high school diploma nowadays. I've looked every day for employment in the newspaper, on the internet, I even went door to door to businesses. I had several interviews, but no employment offers. My electric and water bill is being turned off. I have no fuel to drive 15 minutes to a supermarket to get something to eat. I live on the Navajo Indian Reservation, and I have to travel great distance to look for employment. My insurance has been canceled. My internet is shut off because I have no funds to pay for it. I simply don't have any cash or income at all. We take cold showers because we can't afford propane to heat our water. I would like to tell the elected representatives in Congress that we need them to push harder to get the emergency unemployment extended. It helps people who remain unemployed. We work hard every day to get employment. But we hear you, Patricia, and we stand with you. Thank you. Pamela Springs from the National Urban League. Good afternoon, everyone. I'm Pamela Springs with the National Urban League Washington Bureau. I'm here today because the National Urban League knows that America can no longer ignore the working poor, the opportunity gap, the wealth gap, and the other economic injustices. Fifty years after Freedom Summer, there's still a two-to-one unemployment gap amongst African Americans. Fifty years after Freedom Summer, and we're still not free. For the good of our community, for the good of our economy, and for the good of our country, we, know, we need our elected officials to concentrate on three things. Jobs for all, jobs for all, jobs for all. Amen. Amen. I'm here today to read story from Marissa in Baltimore, Maryland. Marissa writes, this has affected me and my family. I've had to ask the court for a stay of eviction. Unlike for homeowners, there is no protection for renters. If the judge doesn't approve it, my five kids and I will be homeless. I lost my car last month and we have received a cutoff notice, notice for the electric. I have to sell about everything of value. I can only apply for jobs online since I don't have a car now to get around or any money to catch a bus. I have borrowed so much from my family that they now don't even answer the phone when I call. When they see me, they avoid me. I never thought that our own government would turn their back on people who put money in the system. Now, when we are in our time of need, we have been cut off. I believe in God but I'm tired of hearing people to tell me to keep praying. The car company took my car because they don't accept prayers as payments. That's the same for the cable company and my rental office. Obviously, prayers aren't working for the more than two million of us who have lost just about everything. We hear you, Marissa, from Baltimore, and we stand with you. Thank you. I'm going to break from protocol now and ask Elnora to come. Do you want to come up? Um, we have someone who's uh, living through this experience with us, but she asked us to read the story. We're a little shy, but I wanted um, you to, to, to meet her. So here's her story. She lives in Washington, D.C. I was laid off from a staff accountant position at a regional newspaper with many of my coworkers, part of a workforce reduction. I have over 20 years of experience as an accountant and payroll manager. I was a good, hardworking employee who was rewarded by my company for being a top performer. I was told by some people that I would have no trouble finding work because of my age, that I would have trouble finding work because of my age. At first I didn't believe them, but now I do. I started receiving unemployment benefits in August of 2013, and my benefits ended in January. I've been depending on family, friends, and organizations to help me with my rent and food. I've been struggling, and all my bills are behind. Bill collectors call my house repeatedly and harass me. A part of my dignity has been robbed from me. 
because I can't take care of myself. Before being laid off, I had been in the workforce for 47 years. When I worked, I paid my taxes and my taxes supported meaningful safety net programs. But now I'm not working and I need the programs and benefits elected officials want to cut and take away the very programs I've invested in all these years to strengthen families and communities. I've been job searching. Some of the companies call back and others I never hear from. It costs money to look for work. The cost of public transportation continues to rise. Have members of Congress ever thought about what it's like to walk in the shoes of the unemployed? When they make statements that we're lazy because we take benefits, it hurts. I wonder if they understand that all the resource and benefits they take advantage of are paid out of our tax dollars. Mm. But no one is calling them lazy. I'm not looking for a handout, I'm looking for a job. I've been looking to have my self-respect restore, self restored like every hardworking American that has been laid off. Reinstating my benefits would help me look for a job and restore that part of my dignity. Thank you. Thank you. We're going to end with Sister Simone Campbell of the network. Good afternoon. I'm Sister Simone Campbell, the Executive Director of Network, a National Catholic Social Justice Lobby, and moderately famous for being the leader of the nuns <laughs> on the bus. But I'm here today as a person of faith because our Pope Francis, who has caught the world's imagination, has spoken clearly that the goal of any society is to provide for all of its members. And he has clearly identified that the key way forward is for everyone to have meaningful employment at living wages. But in those situations where that is not possible, he has also made it abundantly clear is that a society, a government, has a right to care, has a responsibility to care for those who are left out. Now, I do this as a, a, mem a Catholic sister, as a person of faith. But you know what? Those very same values are the same values we hold in the Constitution, where we say it's we, the people of the United States, working together to form a more perfect union. And this is required for the general welfare of our society to pass unemployment insurance for these long-term unemployed people because families are suffering, our nation is suffering, our economy is suffering, the world is suffering because we are not caring for the least among us. And I want to share with you the story of Wendy from Akron, Ohio, because her story broke my heart. She herself is employed, as you'll hear, but it's her husband who she speaks for because he appears to be quite depressed and unable to say his own story at this point. So she, as the wife of an unemployed worker, is speaking up because they are desperate. And she says this, my husband was laid off from a very good mold-making career that he planned on retiring from. He went to school for this career, and we thought we had a promising future. It would never make us rich, but we would be able to pay our bills and maybe go out to dinner or a movie occasionally. Those hopes all disappeared when our government failed us by not renewing UI in December 2013. I work full-time as an LPN. That's a licensed practical nurse. But I do not earn enough to pay all of our bills. It's been very difficult. We have medical issues, and health care through my employer for us is $460 a month, with a $500 deductible each year, which includes office visits and prescriptions. So needless to say, we've been going without seeing our doctors and buying needed medicine. We had our phone shut off. We stay about one week from getting our car repossessed and our home foreclosed on. I owe everyone in my family and have no idea how to pay them back. I can't afford ink to print resumes. I go to work with no food for lunch because the day I get paid, I'm already broke. We need a lifeline to get back on track and allow my husband to continue to look for employment, to support our family, and continue to be active citizens. Well, I want to say to Wendy, I hear your cry. The members of the House of Representatives hear your cry. They will act because their hearts will be touched and their heads will be affected. Thoughts need to change. The way forward is to come together, pass 
unemployment insurance for those who are struggling in our economy and make our nation a more perfect union. Thank you so much. Thank you. We'll be back next week. We won't give up. We won't give in. Extend, renew, extended unemployment benefits. Thank you. Amen.